Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. My name is Ricardo Vinuesa, and today we're going to uh, discuss the last video of the series, Introduction to Machine Learning. Today we're going to talk about the robust principal component analysis. This is a method that really helps us with data that has outliers, that has noise and imperfections, in such a way that we can keep the essential information and try to filter out, uh, in a quite natural way, uh, noisy uh, points and outliers. So let's jump right in into it in the robust principal component analysis. Principal component analysis. So this is basically RPCA. And remember that the principal component analysis is, uh, is very closely associated with the singular value decomposition. Yeah? So this is kind of like a recurring theme that we are uh, exploring in this, in this part of the, of the series. So why do uh, outliers affect significantly the results? Okay. So why do outliers significantly affect the results. Well, the idea is that um, doing an SVD is basically uh, taking a least square fit. Okay? So when, when we do an SVD, remember that the SVD is the singular value decomposition, uh, we solve a least squares fit to the problem and if you remember the previous videos basically our snapshot matrix x is going to be approximated by u r which is uh, the truncated uh, left uh, singular vector matrix times sigma r, which is diagonal, plus v r star, okay? And v r star will cont contain the right singular vectors. So basically, this is a, a least square fit to this problem. So basically, if we now denote the new matrix x r, where x r is not x, x r is going to be the product of u r, sigma r, and v r star. So x r, which is u r times sigma r, times V R star uh, is the rank R matrix is the rank R matrix uh, that minimizes that minimizes this difference the difference um, in an L2 norm sense between X and X R, okay? This is R is an L2 norm. So this is a, a least square fit, right? So of course, um, uh, the least square regression is greatly affected by outliers. <laughs> this is something that we've talked about in the course a few times when we talked about regularization. If you have a number of points and you want your uh, curve to go through those points exactly, that's what you do with a least square uh, regression problem. But of course, if you have a very wrong point, that's gonna offset the whole curve for the whole um, domain representation uh, to a very wrong data point in that in that uh, neighborhood right so least square least square uh, problems are greatly affected by outliers are greatly affected by outliers and this is known, okay? Uh, that's why we have been talking about regularization for quite some time in several of our videos. Uh, but at the end, the SVD is a least square problem, okay? Now, what is the idea behind the robust principal component analysis? So the idea behind RPCA. Okay, we're going to uh, take care of the outliers and we're going to 
perform a new type of matrix decomposition that is going to help us to isolate those outliers. So remove outliers. that are sparsely located. Located. By decomposing X. Into a structured Low rank matrix L L and a sparse matrix S. This sparse matrix S is going to contain the outliers and corrupt data. Outliers and corrupt data. So in this uh, type of decomposition, our matrix L is the robust term, right? It's the robust part of our robust principal component analysis, okay? So this low rank matrix L will contain the good data and this sparse matrix S will contain the outliers or corrupt data. So basically we can write our uh, decomposition like this. We can write X equals L plus S, okay, this is this matrix decomposition, where uh, the matrix L is low rank, okay, and this matrix S is going to be sparse, okay, this is the, uh, this, this low rank decomposition for this um, data matrix. Uh, the idea, so the key of this method is the following. We need to find the two matrices. So we find we find L and S that minimize minimize uh, the rank of L. Remember that this is the low rank matrix. Okay, so on the first, uh, on the one hand, we need to minimize the rank of L. On the other hand, we need to uh, well take into account and minimize the number of non-zero elements of S. Non-zero elements of S. So this uh, obviously is going to increase the sparsity of that matrix, right? So on the one hand, we want to minimize the rank of L. If we want to minimize the number of non-zero uh, elements of S, uh, that means that we're going to come up with a pretty good representation of this um, of this matrix. Okay. Uh, in fact, what we are doing here, what we are doing here, is that we are um, looking at the zero norm of S which is always associated with sparsity, okay? So the zero norm is basically the number of non-zero elements, right? Um, and we want to make that uh, zero. We want to have many elements that are uh, towards zero in such a way that we can uh, that we can have as sparse as possible. Um, of course, uh, this is not a convex optimization problem, right? Because uh, if we define it in such a way that this is the, the L0 norm, so the elements are either, a, so this is actually the thing, right? The elements are either one or zero. One if the element in matrix S is non-zero or zero if it's zero. So to, to do this type of optimization, which is binary, right? That's really a, a non-convex a non optimization problem that's very difficult to, to converge numerically. So what we're gonna do is relax this condition 
uh, instead of having an L0 uh, norm, we're going to look at an L1 um, relaxation, L1 norm, such that it's not so much about having the non-zero elements of um, the number of non-zero elements in the matrix, but rather reduce the values of the elements, the absolute value of those elements in the matrix, and that will make many zero. So you see, this kind of like a like a smoother, more subtle way to fulfill the sparsity requirement. With the L0 norm, you have a, with L0 norm, you have a one if the element is non-zero, or a zero if the if that element is zero, and the ones need to be turned into zeros, right? That's what optimization is doing. That's that's tricky. That's computationally complicated because it only has two possible states. If you replace that L0 norm for an L1 norm, then what you have is the absolute value of the entry, right? So if the element is non-zero, uh, well, the, when you evaluate the norm, what you will have is the absolute value of that uh, entry. Uh, if I minimize that, if I minimize the L1 norm, I'm doing, in effect, something quite similar to uh, making many elements zero because I'm reducing the absolute value of all of those uh, elements. Right? But I do it in a less strict way. Uh, I do it in a more convex way, such that this optimization is computationally much, ma much more uh, attainable and much smoother to, to realize. So that's, that's very common, and that's why we have talked about many times in the course about replacing the L0 norm by an L1 regularization, which is in a way going in the same direction, but in a bit of a less strict manner. So essentially, what we're going to be doing is uh, acknowledge that, however, this is not convex. However, uh, these are not convex, right? Both of these optimizations are not convex. So what we do is uh, consider a convex relaxation. So our problem will be the minimum, and our arguments are both L and S, so the two matrices L and S, uh, where I have the nuclear norm. So I'll tell you more uh, about it in just a second. The nuclear norm of L plus lambda, which is going to be a hyperparameter, this regularization parameter, times the L1 norm of S. Okay, And this is subject to uh, the fact that L plus S Oops, let me just write that better. Here we go. L plus S, that needs to be equal to X. Okay. This is our new optimization problem with a convex relaxation. As I mentioned, we have replaced the L0 norm um, for S by an L1 norm, which is a much more natural way to, to increase the sparsity. Um, and this is the nuclear norm. So basically, this one over here, this one over here, is the nuclear norm, which is basically the sum of singular values. Sum of singular values. And this lambda, uh, is a, well, a regularization parameter, which we are going to calculate as 1 divided by the square root of the maximum between Madrid and Norway, keeping in mind that our matrix X is of size Madrid times Norway, okay? Or Norway times Madrid. Actually, typically what we have is uh, M, the number of columns, right? So Madrid, the number of, uh, of columns, that's the number of uh, snapshots in time. Norway is going to be the number of read points. So let's write it N times M, Norway times Madrid. Uh, this is a, a rule of thumb to set this um, this hyperparameter, uh, which is going to regularize with the, uh, with the L1 norm, with the sparsity component. Um, two important notes. The first one is that... Um, the proxy for rank, let's put it like this, the proxy for the rank is the nuclear norm. Nuclear norm, which is the sum of singular values. And this kind of makes sense, right? I mean, it's not exactly the rank, 
but it's but it's connected. I mean, it's going to give you a good indication of the rank, uh, the the sum of the singular values. And it's much easier to compute, and much easier to optimize when you're aiming at uh, minimizing the sum of the singular values than just minimizing the rank. So this is a pretty good proxy, the nuclear norm, for the condition of minimizing the rank of the matrix. The second proxy, so the proxy um, for sparsity, this was for rank, nuclear norm for sparsity, that means that we have many zero entries in our um, in our matrix, is uh, the L1 norm instead of the zero norm, which is the sum of the absolute values. Now, with this, what we have uh, is a pretty good um, a reformulation of the problem. This is a convex optimization problem, so this is going to be much easier to compute. What we're going to end up is a, with a robust term, which will contain my data uh, in a, well, hopefully excluding outliers and information that is densely concentrated and outside the patterns of the main amount of the main bulk of the data. And in S, we're going to have this sparse component. We're going to have the noisy data and hopefully the corrupt data. Okay, so that's pretty much everything for, for today. Uh, and this concludes the series on introduction to machine learning. Uh, in the next series, we're going to uh, delve into other methods. We're going to have a whole series dedicated to dynamic mode decomposition, and we're going to have another series dedicated to uh, chaotic systems and modeling. So we'll have a pretty good range of material for the next weeks. Uh, thanks for coming, and see you next time.